Hey, it's been a while since we caught up. Today, I wanted to talk about the different neuroscience disciplines that exist and the jobs that you can potentially pursue as a neuroscience major and which internships you can possibly pursue for research experience. This is by no means an exhausted video that details every nitty gritty of neuroscience, but I hope this helps you get started with what you want to do with your future career. What are the different neuroscience disciplines that exist? Number one is behavioral neuroscience. So behavioral neuroscience is a field that is concerned with the neural and biological basis of behavior, including effects of lesions and electrical stimulation, recording electrical activity, hormonal influences, and effects of drugs, etc. Comparing behavioral neuroscience with cognitive neuroscience, cognitive neuroscientists seek to answer the question, how do the chemicals and electrical signals produced by neurons in the brain give rise to cognitive processes such as perception, memory, understanding, and reasoning? Cognitive neuroscience is an interdisciplinary area of research that focuses on understanding how the mind relates to the brain. Next, we have cellular neuroscience. This involves studying the structure and function of individual neurons, so the morphology and physiological properties, and how they communicate with each other and how they are affected by disease or injury. Next, we have molecular neuroscience, which basically focuses on the biology of the nervous system with molecular biology, molecular genetics, and protein chemistry methodologies. For those who love math and statistical models, computational neuroscience might be a field for you. This involves developing mathematical and computational simulations to understand how the brain processes information. Lastly, we have neuroimaging. And this, as you can probably guess, involves a lot of magnetic resonance imaging and positron emission tomography to study the structure and function of the brain in living humans and animals. These are just a few examples of the different neuroscience disciplines that exist. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I really love sitting on the ground more than I enjoy sitting on the chair. When you sit on the ground, you have more flexibility in terms of your range and your motion, and that potentially helps with your attention. I don't know, just the theory. What jobs can I get as a neuroscience major? So first, you can become a neuroscientist. You basically pursue a PhD in whatever field you find most intriguing and that invigorates you. Potentially becoming a neurologist or a neuroscientist surgeon may speak volumes to you. You could potentially even become a neuropsychologist. A neuropsychologist is an expert in how brain injuries affect your behavior, mood, and thinking skills. There are two main types of neuropsychologists. There are cognitive neuropsychologists and clinical neuropsychologists. Cognitive neuropsychologists basically work directly with research and clinical neuropsychologists work directly with patients who are seeking care and they perform tests to assess cognitive function and design treatment plans alongside a healthcare team. You can even become a science writer. You can potentially write about any neuroscience topic or newspaper, magazines, The Atlantic, and any other online publications. If you love mentoring kids and teaching people, maybe you can even become a science educator. So you can pursue a PhD in any field of neuroscience and then becoming a professor. You can even become a biotech researcher. A key question to ask yourself is whether you want to go into academia or industry. Okay, hello again. I know that down eagles are not flattering, but that's not really the point here. So the exciting part, how do I get lab experience? In college, I straight up cold emailed professors. I didn't really know how to cold email at that time when I was a freshman, but I basically said, hey, Professor X, my name is Tammy, and I am really interested in your research because X, Y, Z, could we potentially set up a meeting to discuss? And I basically printed out one of their recently published papers and or one of their featured publications on their website. I printed it out, read it in a detailed manner, uh, and I highlighted certain parts that I had questions about. And when I went to their office hours, some of the questions, and I ended with the question of, may I please join your lab? So that is how I ended up with my first research experience. All right, here is the tea. Here are some of the internships that you can potentially apply for. Number one is Amgen Scholars Program. Each summer, hundreds of undergraduates, they step into world premiere research. 
research. Wow! Next, we have our National Institutes of Health Summer Internship Program in Biomedical Research. I'm just going to provide that in a link below because that would be much more helpful. So the whole list, the holy grail, will be down in the description box below. If you applied for a summer internship and you did not get in anywhere, this is where your entrepreneurship comes in handy. They'll cold email a bunch of professors and after, let's say, 15 emails, you finally get this professor who says, yes, you can totally join our institution. It would be an honor to have you. If you're worried about money, most of the times, a lot of institutions, let's say Vassar, for example, has this fellowship money that you can apply for. Like this would be a great opportunity. If I didn't have this fellowship money, I probably would not have been able to pursue this research experience that will be substantial to pushing my career forward. Essentially, that is your own personally curated Lastly, one of the beautiful tips that one of my mentors have told me was that if you absolutely cannot get any experience, potentially tapping into your inner network or email your school's alumni. There are multiple ways of getting into research. And when something fails, this is basically a redirection. If you have any questions or have any additional information that you think would be helpful to others, please feel free to provide that in the comment box below. And that's it for today. Day. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble and moving around the house. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!